Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Standing next to me is the lovely Keystone Girl. Hello. Today, we're gonna to be working on Spicer Designs' biggest project yet. These are big too. <laughs> so what we're gonna be working on are two exterior aluminum signs. Uh, it's gonna be the business's logo. The signs are 10 foot wide by 42 inches tall and there's three different layers to them. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that design. We'll get started. Subscribe. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump on Fusion 360. I'm gonna show you exactly what this job is. I'm not gonna get into a bunch of detail on the CAD and all that. You could look at some of my other videos if you wanna see that. I just want you to see what it is that we're gonna be doing. So when I start fabbing this thing up, you have an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here, what the finished product is supposed to look like. What I've got now is I've got an image of the logo, uh, this is gonna be the main building sign. There's actually gonna be two of these signs that they want. Uh, they're gonna go in two different places on their property. So let's take a look at this logo. Okay, here is the image of their logo that they sent me called Davies Imperial Coating. This is the image. Uh, there's no vector lines here. I have to basically trace over all this, uh, find the font that matches. So here is everything after I got done with it. Uh, this is the final drawing here. This is what I showed them as a rendering that they approved. Uh, you could see I've got a bunch of these little holes all over. Those are reference holes. So those holes are going to be cut in these pieces and in the main sign, this back piece right here. So let's turn this thing and you kind of get an idea of the different layers that are on this. If you look closely, you can see that the, the letters in Davies are all floating off of this main sign here. And you can see the reference holes where they all match up and I'll be putting spacers in there <clears throat> and welding them in place. And then when I put them together, everything will match up perfectly. So you can see the Davies letters and then there's this line right here that's underneath um, industrial coatings. Those are all raised and the crown is raised as well. Now, if we flip this thing over completely, you'll see I have a couple of panels on the back here. They're just backers. So the way it's set up on this building is it's a brick building and the customer does not want to see the brick through the letters. So the letters Imperial coating and the address right here, those are all cut in the main body of the sign. You'll be able to see through them and he didn't want to see the brick. So I have those back panels that will go in there also on spacers. So it'll create like another dimension and those will be powder coated uh, the same colors that are incorporated in this sign. So that's basically it. Um, that's what the sign is supposed to look like. Let's start getting everything set up with the welder and the fab table and we'll start putting this thing together. Now in order to weld aluminum with this Hobart 210 MVP, uh, we're gonna have to make a couple of adjustments. So I've got some 030 aluminum MIG wire I had to get a 100% uh, argon bottle versus the carbon dioxide and argon mix that we would normally use for mild steel. So I picked this thing up. It's got a little weight to it. Oh, oh. Just kidding. It's not, uh, not explosive or flammable. Uh, the most important thing is going to be the spool gun. Uh, you pretty much need to have a spool gun to weld aluminum. That wire is too soft. It can't be pushed through the feed wire. It, it'll just ball up right here inside this compartment. So that spool needs to be right at the gun so there's no extra force needed to push it in to make your weld. All right, let's check out the spool gun here. I ordered this thing off Amazon. It's pretty, uh, it's, I wouldn't say specific for just my machine, but it's a Hobart spool gun. I'll leave links below in case you do have this welder. Uh, you can check it out. Okay, here's the spool gun. You can see that your spool is gonna go right in here and it'll feed directly right where you're welding at. Now, you could use these also for your solid core wire, but um, it's kind of big and bulky. And once you put that spool in there, it gets kind of heavy too. So typically, you would normally see guys using these pretty much for aluminum jobs only, but um, it's just kind of a preference thing. Badass. What in the hell is this for? Let's see what we got here.
now that I got that welder all set up for welding aluminum, I'm going to get those saw horses set up and we're going to start getting that sign and all the framework ready to go and uh, start putting this thing together. Alright, very important, since I don't have some kind of a frame fabrication table, I'm just using these saw horses. You're going to want to make sure that each one of them are level because if they're not, uh, you might be building a frame for the sign and it might have a somewhat of a twist in it. So very important, spend the time doing the setup so that the final product comes out perfecto. All right, we're going to try this the easy way. There it is. Yep, it's already cut. So this is the main base plate of the sign and I know what you're thinking. How in the f did you cut this huge sign on that little plasma machine? And the answer is I didn't. Uh, so obviously this thing is way too big for my machine. So luckily in this area, uh, I have a relationship with a, another fab shop who has a massive uh, fiber optic laser CNC machine. I think it's like six foot by 12 foot that it'll cut. They ended up cutting both of these for me. They cut, they basically made all the cuts for the whole entire job. So all that I have to do is fab all of this together, uh, put all the spacers in, build the frame for it, and then take it over to the powder coater. And then the last part of it is I'm gonna deliver it to the customer and I'm actually gonna install them on the building. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use some one inch by one inch by eighth inch thick aluminum square tube. And we're going to build a frame all the way around the perimeter of this sign. We're going to leave like a half of an inch to a one inch reveal uh, all the way around the border of it. And then we're going to put one more all the way through the middle. And then we basically just have to fab up all of our standoffs for the backing on the, the cut letters and the raised letters on the front side of it. So this is the back side of the, the sign right here. Now this is eighth inch aluminum. It's actually pretty rigid but there's definitely some flex to it. it the square tube frame is, is definitely gonna help with that. And then this will also be part of how we're gonna mount this thing to the brick wall uh, when we go to install it. Okay, I have all the perimeter frame pieces cut right here. I cut them all at 45 so we don't have any open ends on the corners. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna weld this backer plate right here over the address on the bottom. All right, so I got all these standoffs welded in here now. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert on welding aluminum. This is my first time using it with this MIG welder. And um, this is thinner gauge aluminum, so you really gotta be careful with the heat. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is start putting this frame around here, get it all measured up, squared up, start tacking it in, and I'm gonna do real small stitch welds all the way around this thing on the inside and the outside. Alright, so 
it's the next day. Uh, yesterday, I was getting a little frustrated with welding this aluminum. It's very inconsistent. Uh, I was getting a lot of soot and uh, I made some adjustments on the machine and I'm hoping that today will be a little bit better. Uh, probably wasn't my greatest idea to learn how to weld aluminum on my biggest job so far for Spicer Designs, but I will figure it out. I'll get through it and hopefully the end result is what I pictured and the quality comes out nice and, and everyone's happy. So I got the frame all welded up around it. I still have some more uh, stitch welds to do around there. You got to be really careful with the heat on this stuff. It, it kind of burns hot and it blows out. It's, uh, it's just very inconsistent. So the last thing I got to do on this frame is put in this middle uh, section right here across the middle. Uh, there is a little bit of cupping happening. So I'm hoping that when I put this center brace in there, that'll kind of alleviate that issue. Um, I've got all the spacers welded in for the backers on the cut letters. <clears throat> so once I get this frame in, we'll be done with this body. We can start welding up the spacers on all the individual letters and then we can assemble this thing. I'll probably have the Keystone girl give me a hand getting this thing all assembled. Let's get moving. Okay, I got all the, uh, the frame done and I got all the welds cleaned up and I had to grind down quite a few of them. So now I'm gonna put those back plates on. I'm gonna temporarily bolt them in and then get this thing out of the way and we can start working on the individual letters. I feel like I'm losing circulation. <laughs> All right, now that I have those back plates on, you can kind of get a better idea of how it's supposed to look. You can see with that other layer there behind it, it just gives the, uh, the cut letters a little bit more detail to them. And then the surface behind here on those back panels, those will all be powder coated and uh, should give it a nice effect. All right, I have all the letters laid out now on the sign. Uh, there two, there's two of them, of course, because there's two signs, but I wanted to make sure that I had them all laid out and all the holes match up so I'm not welding the standoffs to the wrong side of the letter. Uh, and as I mentioned before in some of my previous videos, uh, like the Hometown Acres video, is I put all these reference holes in here. They're going to be used for two different things. One of them is going to be the standoffs, where they're going to mount to, and the other one is a reference. So on the body of the sign I also have the same matching holes that way once I weld the standoffs on and put all these in place there's no measuring they will all just bolt right up uh, straight from the the programming the CAD design which makes it a lot easier to get everything perfect on the, on the layout all right so now I'm gonna start taking these letters one by one I'll clean them up there's a couple uh, jagged edges on these from that laser cut I'll take them over to the fab table. I'm going to weld on the standoffs and then we'll start bolting these things up. I'll grab the Keystone Girl for that. So let's get moving and grooving. Here are the aluminum standoffs that I'm using. They're completely threaded. Okay, I finally got all these letters welded up. All the standoffs are all welded on them now. These things are ready to get mounted onto the main sign now, but I gotta say, I'm beat. This uh, aluminum kind of sucks to work with, but uh, I could sure 
use a cold one. And uh, I could even use a hand from the Keystone Girl putting this thing together. So let's get her out here. Yo, Keystone Girl! There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, all I got left to do is put the letters on the sign. I actually could use a hand if, if you're available. Sure. I can help you. Okay. Let me get a... Um, if you're going to be working with me, though, you're going to have to wear safety glasses. Safety first. So... Those are uh, family heirloom. What the hell are these? Those are from Great Peepaw. Oh God, no. You look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no. And All right, you don't, have, you don't have to wear them, you don't have to wear them. All right, let's get started. Okay. You wanna grab me the S? The look in your eyes, you can't hide it. Ooh, baby, I know I turn Twig. Not heavy, really. Oh, no. It's aluminum. No, 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 you go that way. Just watch out because it might, it could be sharp, so just keep a good grip on it. Don't let it slide. Well, you're going to have to go closer. That's okay. We can just stand it up. Just stand it up. Just stand it up. No, 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 no. Stand it up. Come on. However you want. Just don't let it fall on your feet. Right, right there. And then lean it up. Thing's big. It is. No, not that. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Come on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it dirty? Uh, well, you don't want to lay on it. You can clean it as many times as you want. It's still gonna be dirty. You can stand on it. It's freaking okay. Three eighths steel. <laughs> I think it's gonna cave in. <laughs> All right, that wraps up for today's video. Uh, this is only gonna be like part one of, of this sign here. I'm gonna take it off to the powder coater. Then I'm gonna get footage of actually doing the install so you can see the finished product all powder coated and done. Overall, this aluminum was a total pain to work with. I'm not a huge fan of it, uh, but it did turn out pretty nice. You can see all of the, the crown and the letters are all raised off the main body of the sign, uh, one inch with some spacers. And then we have a back plate behind the cut letters that kind of give it like a little bit of a shadow effect. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Beer me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody. Oh God. <laughs> Jesus, you're the thumb. Don't spin me. This is a nice, nice view right here. Wait, wait. Just stay right there. All right, my nuts are hurting.